Welcome back everyone to episode 9 of Let's Play Advanced Tactics Gold, the play-by-email multiplayer series. If you are a careful observer, you'll notice that there has been a few changes since the last turn. One, I no longer occupy this forward position. And two, probably more importantly, they have pushed in. So they did not occupy any of these three hexes last turn when I ended and now they do. Uh, this is actually pretty troubling because I have very little armor in this area. I have a lot of divisions of armor which are uh, no armor in this hex and very depleted armor here, no armor here, and I do have one very depleted armor here. So this is going to be a very interesting turn. We're going to have to do obviously some kind of counteroffensive here. Um, to push them back, or I'm gonna have to shore up a defensive line. I turned on um, hex coloring real fast just to make that difference, the indent, a little more obvious, but I'll go ahead and turn it off now. And uh, let's go on to the actual history of last turn, and then we'll talk about what's the new strategy starting with this turn. Um, I should say the very first thing before even his turn began, at the end, after the end of the last episode, before I ended my turn, I did make some changes. Like, I noticed that my artillery were a little exposed. So I tried to solid, um, solidify some of the forward positions. Obviously, I'd already used my artillery to bombard, so I couldn't move them back. But I, I did want to make these hexes a little stronger. It's funny because this hex, I tried to make this one stronger as well, but it ended up being attacked. And we'll see that soon. What the general movement that the my opponent did, the enemy armies just kind of moved north to keep a uh, securing this front, and they did some artillery bombardment. I lost about a total of 140 infantry last turn, so we'll see quite a number of casualties going in. I might even just play this all the way through because it was kind of important the things he's going to do towards the end of his turn. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see. Let me um, get my key here <laughs> out of the way so I can take a sip. There we go. Okay, so let's see. He pushed forward north with more of his armor. And let's see. Moves. Oh, this was a big one. So he did counterattack. Now, this is where the armor was lost last turn. I lost two standard light tanks and I lost an armored car. But in the attack, he actually lost two of his eight standard light tanks, which means that we went we went even. We traded evenly, um, except for my one armored car. So we also stood firm, which means that we didn't lose the hex. And if you stand firm, usually that means the enemy units are completely out of... They can't do anything else for the turn. They're depleted. They need to just stay where they are to recover. So that means he couldn't maneuver any of the forces which he probably wanted to move into the hex he attacked. And it just didn't work out for him. So that was very important. A three-sided attack, just to see that again. Three-sided attack. It was two armored divisions and it looks like at least, well, probably one supporting rifle division. Um, he actually took more infantry losses than we did. Because it was about 25 to, you know, 16-3. Okay, let's see what else happened. Then uh, pulling up more forces from the south, no surprise there. Trying to secure this flank. Artillery bombards, didn't really do much. So he's moving forces down from Bardstad now as well, it looks like. Um, okay, now this is where the movement starts in the south. He moved some tank forward. He moved a tank north. That, if you were on my side of the lines observing, that would have already been the indication that he's going to attack. Puts two tanks in there. Because he is going to attack this hex here. He can't attack from any other hex. So he bombards it with uh, four artillery. And I think he bombards it with more. There's another four artillery. Kills off some more of my units. I only have four standard light tanks in there. And in fact, the four standard light tanks I had were very low on readiness. Extremely low. Um, very low combat value. Uh, looks like he bombarded the, the hex, the open hex, south of me, but didn't really do much. And this is the big attack. 
Now, this is a really unfortunate attack. There's nothing good you can say about this one for me. I mean, killing 10 rifles is really inconsequential. We lost one Saren light tank. We lost, so a light tank. I might as well just call these light tanks. I lost a light tank. I lost four artillery and four horses. So essentially I lost a full artillery division, which is not good. Um, and then I took infantry losses, commiserate infantry losses. He then pushes in and he reinforces. And I guess that's about it for his turn. It's a, oh yeah, he also did attack, bombarded this and then he attacks it as well. Okay, moves some forces around and there's the attack. So he killed 24 of my remaining, I had 60 in there, so looks like the artillery killed 17. And then only at the loss of two, he killed 24, a terrible ratio for me. But those guys were just there to kind of protect my crossroads hex with the artillery. So in that sense, they did their job. It was a noble sacrifice. Okay, so now what, what do I want to do? What's the new state of the situation here, state of affairs? I'm not extremely worried about this counterattack, even though technically he's... I mean, he's still two turns away from getting to angles if he was to just make a beeline directly there. So he can't get there on the next turn. But he can get there on two more turns. So I have plenty of time to react. I have my main headquarters kind of moving forward. That's just to act as the new headquarters of this northern area. But um, that means that he can easily deliver some of the troops that he gets on any given turn to angles pretty quickly. I don't even know if they'll be able to breach here because one of the very first things I'm going to do on my turn is actually push this back. So let's see here. I have some standard light tanks, some light tanks ready to go. I'm gonna put them into this division that's where they're supposed to be. So let's grab those guys, move them forward, and they're available to attack. So right now I have an attack which can be done from, I think, almost all sides with um, armor, except for no armor here, but we can attack with the infantry. This is going to be a pretty overwhelming attack. So is there a better option in this hex? No. Uh, should we bombard first? Probably yes. <laughs> Probably yes, the answer. So let's just bombard with the artillery units here. They should be safe since we'll be retaking this hex. I'm going to retake it at all cost. So I'm going to bombard with these guys, which unfortunately are very low, very depleted forces, but um, I don't see any better option. I could bombard with these guys, but I, I might try to bombard here with those. Actually, what I'm going to do is a little bit strange. I'm going to bombard with one of these guys as well. So let's just take the 118. And then both of these guys. Because remember, these are depleted. They only have a total of... So we lost the divisions worth, so we only have eight total now. And we'll bombard. So this is good. We didn't get any tank kills, which, I mean, that's the... The holy grail <laughs> of an artillery bombardment, but lower the readiness very significantly. I don't think, but just judging by the fact that they left two armor back here and only put one armor forward, it doesn't seem like they intended to hold this hex. But since the opportunity is available to me, I am going to counterattack. Yeah, the best option here is definitely this tank unit. And this is a pretty substantial counterattack. From five sides, we get the 40% bonus. Um, that's actually not as high as I thought. And we have plenty of space for an extra attack, so let's just get this guy. Um, any other armor want to contribute? I could attack with this guy as well, but I think this is sufficient. We have three tanks, three more tanks, although they're low readiness three tanks at low readiness, and then three more tanks at full readiness. So that's pretty good against just four. Let's just hope that this works out. We're taking some casualties, but... Oh, very good. So we killed three of his tanks. That's very good. One survived to retreat, but um, now the question is, should we move in here or not? I'm not 
sure. Not immediately sure what we'll do there. So now this um, answers the question of whether we have to worry about a push breaking our lines. It looks like we're still going to be secure, at least this turn. And this is probably the game of push back, um, back and forth. That was what I was expecting to play um, around Sologen. So I was expecting to be the aggressor <laughs> pushing here. But since this opportunity has opened up to us around Habsburg, or Landsberg, sorry, um, I'm no longer concerned with being the aggressor along these lines. I'm already being the aggressor here, and in general it's better to defend. So I'll be the aggressor up here and we'll see how it works out. Down here we'll just be basically holding. It does mean that we're still going to have to dedicate new forces down here because um, they're obviously, they have a sizable amount of armor down here. Even after killing three light tanks to, oh, by the way, I didn't, stupidly didn't see if we lost any tanks ourselves. But the answer is no, it doesn't look like we lost any tanks. That's good. I don't think I'm even going to push forward with any of these tanks into this hex. It might be better just to leave it blank one more time. In fact, we might even just withdraw. I guess those are the two options. The first option is go ahead and fill this um, hex again. And the alternative is, if we don't do that, we will actually pull this force back as well. So we'll, we'll defend here, here, and then we'll start defending along the marsh and the road. The downside of that is it does make the road hexes more vulnerable, because I'll be defending at the road. Uh, but it exposes him more, because he'll have to be fighting me from the plains instead of coming down from the hills, which is obviously an advantage for him. So if I push back, even I guess I can abandon this whole southern area. <laughs> I could push away from the hills. And one interesting thing is his artillery is exposed as well. In fact, it might not be a bad idea. Does this guy have? He does not have enough action points. Do you have enough action? You do have enough action points to attack. We might lead a charge into the raw here as well. Um, let me see what kind of forces I can muster for that. It looks like just the only thing that can get it is this artillery. Now we do have um, artillery available in the main headquarters, which we can use to do some bombardment. And we'll probably end up doing that. So I can use the artillery here to bombard the bra. Killed, no, just caused a horse to retreat. Okay, caused some more stuff. That did not help greatly though. The advantage we'd have is that we'd be charging in with armor against a hex that doesn't have any armor. The disadvantage is it's a mountainous regime, uh, a mountainous region, so it has very high entrenchment. And on top of that, uh, my armor doesn't attack as well. It has a half penalty, a severe penalty to its attack. Well, I, I want to do the attack still. I I've like made up my mind. I think we're going to do it. So how do I do this? This is way ahead. Um, I think the way I do this is I transfer the artillery and the horses into the artillery division, the blank artillery division, like so. This blue one, instead of heading to the front, actually retreats. Can it, uh, that's a lot. It's going to have... No, it won't have any. Eh, it just doesn't work. The only thing we can do is either attack now or forever hold our peace. Now, against South Mobile, we're decent. 300, 200. How are they against defending? Against armor? They're decent as well. I think we're going to take the chance here. Because we can end up killing a lot of artillery, which will be a nice reprisal for what they did to us. And I can't attack from two hexes. So I'll probably attack with this group, which is slightly higher readiness. And... It would have been nice to have one of my mortar groups available to, for this attack, but it's not the case, unfortunately. And it would have been even better to have this armor available for this attack, but I didn't think enough. I really regret my decision there, actually. Yeah, there's no way any armor can get over here. We probably didn't need to attack with more these guys. 
Anyways, we'd still kill three more armor, and that's maybe arguably more important, but... Okay, so let's just go ahead and do this. The only thing I could do is move this guy across the river. That costs 70... No, that's just... That's not a realistic option. Okay, so this is likely going to take some pretty significant casualties, but... I think we'll even attack in with the machine guns. Okay, that puts us at 60. Now let's get this from slightly better. We're at 90, plus 5%. Really not going to matter. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to take significant casualties, but I'm going to go ahead and bring in even the additional rifle group. And we'll see how poor of an idea this was in a second. Looks pretty even. No, yeah, so we didn't, it didn't work. We didn't lose um, any armored cars, which is the most important thing. But it ended up being a bad trade for us in terms of rifles. We killed horses, but no artillery, which was the main goal. Now they can stay in the reserve, that's why. That's probably what did a lot of damage to our infantry. So in the end, it wasn't a great decision, but I would say that this hex is still really well defended because their armored cars are still helping. <laughs> so that means that I doubt they can do any kind of movement and attack against this hex. And even if they do, my armored cars will defend. On top of that, I kind of wanted to move these guys out, and unfortunately now they can't, but I can always just pull this armor back and let the infantry, the remaining infantry here, just get overrun. It's not a huge deal. Um, I know that's very <laughs> blunt, a little bit callous, but the truth of the matter is the riflemen themselves, I, I have a pretty sufficient supply of riflemen. So we have 180 in reserve right now. So... It's not the best use of your troops, just to throw them in, but the opportunity cost there, I think it was worth it. I mean, not the opportunity, the risk-reward. It didn't pay off this time, but the chance of actually destroying some of their artillery, and we'd imagine that they're going to have to pull this artillery back, too. Okay, so now let's get to the actual places that I want to do some real attacks. So I would say in the end this was not an advisable attack, but that's okay. We make mistakes, we learn. Now, what I, I'm going to do in the north is I'm going to try to attack through both of these hexes. I'm going to save my armored cars for the attack to the north because these groups, this group here is very weak. How I'm going to do this is actually use one of my groups here for artillery bombardment of this guy. I don't think we need two. But then I'm actually just going to send my infantry in to attack this guy. So let's see. Lowered their readiness down to 17. Lowered their entrenchment. Killed eight units in the process as well, which is pretty good. And uh, this group, you can see, is very weak. Total combat strength of around, let's call it 15 to be generous. So we'll attack across the river with this group. And they're going to get a 50% penalty because it's a huge, it's a river, a huge water crossing penalty. So I think I'm going to attack with the groups like this, just to kind of prevent as many losses as possible. Um, yes, I think this is what I want to do. And actually, yeah, so the infantry down here can support my armored cars. So that's what I'm going to do. I just want to make sure I have one infantry group who can support the attack to the north. And here we go. So pretty brutal, even with the better infantry, choosing the better infantry. I mean, a 2 to 1 ratio, so I guess that's good. That's a victory for us for sure. And the fact that we're taking territory is also good. So we'll move this group in, and we'll move this group in, just to help defend the territory. Now, because we push the enemy out, this artillery doesn't have to be as cautious about moving into this hex, which is going to allow them to bombard this group a little bit better. And I'm not too worried about the results of this, because we do have armored cars going in. So we already expect that armored cars are going to do a little better. Yeah, they're very weak. I would say that they have two groups which are a little worrisome. One with machine guns, which I'm not worried about with armored cars because they don't defend any better. And one with mortars, which it can be a concern because mortars do have a pretty good combat strength against armor. But let's just see how this goes. I'm going to bring up not a mortar team, just in case I need this mortar team attacking anywhere else. But I will bring up my 
best of these two infantry to support. Now, that I do want to ask the question, you can't move in and still attack. No, that costs too much. Yeah, for both of them. Okay, that's fine. So now let's do the attack with the new infantry and both the armored cars. I do have artillery remaining that I could use, but I'm going to use those probably against one of the tanks in the west. So let's go ahead and conduct this attack. And I assume that my armored cars are really going to get the job done. And this is this is a massacre. So we lost 18, but they lost 60. So 3 to 1 ratio. And we also killed 3 machine guns and 3 mortars, which are pretty valuable. Uh, the question is what units to move in. Well, I don't see... There's no armor here. There is armor here, but it is pretty weak. Um... Because we could end up getting cut off. I, I am going to move this in engineer forward. He's going to build a road all the way up to here. He can't cross the river this turn, but he can next turn, I think. So we'll get him to build a river crossing. And now we have a two-pronged invasion going into this northwest, which is really good. So even if they happen to retake one uh, foothold across the, the river or lake or whatever, waterfront, we'll, we should have another option available to us. So... So that means that we want to defend this hex pretty well. Which almost means that we should be moving my armored cars into there, which is like the one place they can't go because I guess it was enemy territory, so it would cost extra to move in there. That's okay. You know, at this point, I don't think we're going to be attacked from this side, although it wouldn't be a terrible idea because we are very weak. If they were able to do like a two-pronged attack, um, if they were able to push in through the center like they've been kind of trying to do, and then also brought an army over the top, they could really cut off my entire army. I mean, that would be an incredible maneuver. But what I imagine is going on right now is a lot of panic in the lines, and they're, they're barely able to muster enough forces to keep me out of Landsberg. So that's probably where the all the forces from Barnstadt are going, south and not towards the east. So to that point, I just want to move this unit a little bit closer as a little just preventative, I guess. And let's move this jeep over here. In fact, he can cross, but he'd be out of supply. He would be out of supply except for here. That's crazy. Very interesting that we can actually cross the river if we wanted. I don't see any reason to do that because we could just get mowed down, but let's move this jeep a little bit closer just to get better scouting. Okay, good. So we still don't know what anything is going on, but eh, it shouldn't be a big deal. Okay. So Landsberg is two hexes away, and I think we can duct an attack on this unit because there's only two standard light tanks and they're pretty disorganized. So it's a, a very depleted armored division. And we want to try to take advantage of the weaknesses. You know, you drive uh, your sword into the weakest point of the enemy's armor. Literally, their armor. <laughs> we're talking about like medieval armor, but in this case, we're actually talking about the weakest armor. That's the one we're going to attack. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to bring up this light tank division to support the attack. I'm also going to move this artillery in so that we can get um, better, we can get a huge bombardment off before before actually beginning. I don't know if we'll use both. Let me use one. Let me use one just for starting and then use another if it didn't go well. But if this goes well, we might, tanks are not going to be um, injured by this. So maybe it's not worth it. Yeah, this is so low already. We're not expecting to get any damage to these light tanks. That has to be done by our army. So at this point, what would the attack look like? Three armored cars and five light tanks against two light tanks. We're definitely expected to win that. And because the artillery is not going to do any really any more damage to that unit, I'm not going to use it in that. So we'll just do the attack now. Hopefully get the kills. Oh my gosh, that was a disaster. We lost an armored car and a tank and only killed two armored car or two tanks. We actually were victorious because of this other light armor, which is kind of insane, but we actually need that unit instead of moving forward to move back down south. They can't do anything else anyway. I don't actually want to move into this hex. I'm going to allow them to retake it because I don't want to be overexposing myself. So we'll move this group back down south, like so. Hmm. Uh, 
Um, yeah, the question now is whether to advance my armored cars forward or not. I think we do. This group actually, this armored car, oh, was involved in the attack. Do I have any other armor that can get an attack in here? Yes. But doing so would put me out of this crossroads hex. But yeah, we're really getting down to the nitty gritty decisions here. Hmm. I mean, this engineer can easily build a road, just road, road. And then we can abandon these three hexes entirely. But that's only going to buy us one turn. <laughs> Next turn, they'll still be right up against me. And even if I use my armor in the marsh, remember, armor actually defends worse in the marsh. So even though they take a 75% penalty to their attack, I take a 50% penalty, so I don't really defend that much better. It's the same thing, basically, for the armor attacking into a raw. If they're attacking you, you they get a penalty, and you don't. In this case, we both get penalties, but um, the, the ratio of the attack's um, strength is still the same. Okay, so what do I want to do? I probably talked about the game mechanics a little too much, so I apologize. I'll try to keep things just real world. Ah, this is just a tough decision. Uh, that didn't go as well as I was hoping. I probably should have used the other artillery. We can probably attack this group by using artillery, but sh is that better spent weakening possible attacks from other sides? But let's be real. The main attacks coming right now are all going to be from armor, and we're not going to do much defense against that with artillery. I will move this from art artillery up and in. I'll probably move this guy back somewhere. <laughs> He's not in a good position where he is. Probably just right here. So we do have two artillery which can continue to bombard. What I think I'm going to do is use one here. Just to see what kind of damage we get done. Okay, so we lowered it down to 16 readiness and 22 entrenchment. Is this a possible opportunity for an attack? If we push that line out, then we definitely don't need to keep my armor cars here. I think I like that. So let's try to do an attack there. I can use some of my mortars. Um, I don't know if any infantry is available. Let's see. Infantry, mortar, and <laughs> who else is available? I would have to do the attack with infantry and mortar because nobody else is available for the attack. Everyone else is tied up in other, in other things. Um, is this machine gun available? No. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty bad. <laughs> that's pretty bad. Can this guy move? He cannot. Hmm. I mean, maybe we could just abandon this. I don't know. It's so tough. It's tough to say. Because I, I, I could use this, this armor car. Oh, this armor car can't actually attack. That is news to me. So we'd have to do an attack with just two divisions against two divisions. They are pretty well depleted though. Well, let's do the artillery bombardment. I mean, the two choices are here. We might, no, that too high readiness to possibly get a kill there. Too high readiness, I think, that they're too organized. We can't, it's very unlikely we get a kill. So let's just go ahead and do it. Let's follow up with more artillery bombardment. Well, that was not much. <laughs> The readiness is down to eight, though. They're pretty weak. I think, I think we can actually get this done. So let's attack with the mortar team from here, and the infantry from here. And we might as well use this machine gun group, even though it's already pretty weak, because they're the only ones who can help. So it's a seventy-five plus five percent. It's you know about a hundred to five, so it should go our way. Let's see. Okay, so it, it went our way, but only just barely. We did kill a machine gun, actually five machine guns, that's very good. So um, 22 casualties, what we took, and we inflicted 32. Yeah, that's that's good in the end. Over two to one is definitely good. And now what the main good thing about what we've done here is we've pushed them back in every hex. 
What hexes do we actually want to reoccupy? I mean, you could even argue maybe none. No, I think we have to occupy this hex because that's going to protect our um, river crossing here. We're going to have to start treating this one just like this hex as something we don't want the enemy to have access to. So let's go ahead and move at least one armor car in there. And I think we just move both armor cars in, to be honest. Oh, this is interesting. We don't have access to that. These guys will provide good scouting too. Oh, wow. So this is where their headquarters is. They have one more armor, but it doesn't look like it has armor in it. They don't have any armor up here. That's really good to know. So the only armor they have in this area are these two, which are the yellows that came up from this area down here. So they have purple in the north, yellow is the middle, and green is their southern. That's compared to like, I have my blue north, yellow middle, and green south. Huh, is that the same? Purple versus blue though. Okay, almost the same. All right, well, this is turning into a longer episode, but there has been a lot of work we had to get done. So what do we do? I don't think we leave, I, I wanna leave the mortars in reserve, but I think we will go ahead and casually move in the riflemen that we engaged in this attack. Yeah, this is gonna put um, zone of control pressure. Basically, if they wanna move around this force, they'll have to do it a little more carefully. So they won't be able to do as aggressive of movements because this is no longer behind the front. This is at the front. And this is not um, the front because we haven't moved forces in yet. So it's technically our, we control that area, but we don't have any units there to exert pressure um, on the other units. So it's kind of a, a nothing control. <laughs> it doesn't really result in anything. Now, did we, we did the attack with, I thought one other guy can move north. Yeah, so we'll do, we'll definitely move that guy north which will help. These guys can only move to the northeast, which is not useful to me, so we'll leave them here. Um, we wanna bring up more forces now, so this is where we have, uh, for example, we have a machine gun here, which we'll move in, yeah, we'll move in here, perfect. Which means that this machine gun can actually move north. It looks like it's probably the waste of this machine gun to move in there, because it's a likely, yeah, it's a likely target of an attack, so we'll just, kind of sacrifice this division for the control of this area. Okay. All right, so we want this mortar group to move forward so that they're prepared to assist in an attack next turn. I don't think this hex will be attacked, but it looks like a good place for us to put forces forward. I don't think this hex will be attacked either, to be honest. Two armored cars versus four. Two light tanks versus two. Yeah, so this is a stronger hex just in general. So I'm gonna put my um, mortar team actually here. Not because we need to defend it, but to get them ready for uh, another attack. Basically this puts them in position to attack Landsberg next turn, which is pretty huge. Okay. So, what else do we want to do? I think we move this, I guess we're going to get this Jeep across because I kind of want to know what forces we're dealing with. And they should add some reconnaissance, but where? It, actually, the armored cars are doing a really good job scouting. So I'm going to leave the Jeep, I don't know where to put them actually. <laughs> what, what is useful for me? Where do I need to scout? It's gonna end up being up here, I think, so we'll just leave them there for now. All right, well, um, I don't know what to do about this hex, pull back or stay forward, and I, I think I wanna think about it a little off camera. So what I'm gonna do is call this episode to a close here, and I'll do the unit transfers and rearrange any of the defensive line. Um, I'll do that off camera. So next episode, the first thing I'll start off with doing is telling you whether or not I decided to hold this line or to put you know to push up or to fall back with my defense. I'll also tell you there was another thing. Oh yeah, when did I end up doing over here? If I end up trying to hold this hex, which I think I'm going to do, or um, yeah, and we have some infantry here which I'm going to push forward as well. It doesn't seem it's not a very good idea to just leave them here. So let's move this group here and get this group back to 
acquire a little bit more readiness. I can't move that guy, so we'll have to leave him there, but that's the general idea is get these guys off the front if they're low readiness to give them a chance to recuperate a little bit. Yeah, so we have this um, mortar group. Let's move that guy north as well. Okay, and this is actually a weak hex. I don't care if I lose it, though, so I'm going to let it be weak. It can't be attacked by the armor, and I don't think that they have any incentive to march up and try to attack it. It doesn't really make any sense. So, Anyways, that's going to be it for this episode, so thanks for watching, and I'm really excited. Things are really starting to take shape in, this, in the war. So you have this clear push by me in the northwest. Again, long-term goal is Landsberg. It seems like it's a short-term goal, but that's just it, just Landsberg. If we do that, we can kind of move north along this open plains area, which should be pretty hard to defend, and we can cut off Barnstad. Once we do that, they shouldn't be able to get enough um, reinforcements. Eventually, we should starve them out. And once we do that, especially because they won't be able to get any armor, since his armor fact factory is way over here. Over here. So uh, if we cut them off, then we can slowly starve Barnstad out. And with two cities, um, I will feel in a very secure position to win. So that's the long-term strategy, as long as I can hold the middle, you know, assuming I don't lose angles <laughs> to some counterattack, which we see is, um, there's a reasonable threat of that. Anyways, again, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next episode where we continue the series.